Sony mirrorless cameras have tons of settings you can adjust and a menu system that is, well, let's face it, it sucks. So with all these options and a confusing menu system, how can you find the best bird photography settings for your Sony camera? I've been using Sony cameras for a number of years now, and for all of them, I start with these camera settings to capture my bird photos. Hey, Dave Reed here. Thanks for tuning in. One of the biggest challenges in bird photography is the camera settings. Where do you start? And when it comes to Sony, opening the menu system is enough of a challenge. In the early days, I remember hearing Scott Kelby saying that you should stick to using aperture priority for better control of your shots. So I thought, hey, start shooting with aperture priority mode for my bird photography. You guessed it. I quickly learned I was wrong. I'd like to thank you for tuning in and please help to support my channel by subscribing and hitting that notification button below so you won't miss my next video. And if you'd like to learn more about my bird photography, check out my Instagram channel where I detail what camera settings I used for each bird photo. The link is in the description below. With an overwhelming number of settings on a Sony camera, it becomes increasingly difficult to know which ones to use. Then you have a steep learning curve to understand how these settings work together. Combine this with trying to take photos of birds and you have one hell of a challenge. It took me several years to learn what camera settings worked and what ones didn't. I finally settled on these basic Sony camera settings for shutter speed, aperture, ISO, focus points for all of my Sony cameras. I use these settings every time I head out to capture pictures of birds. I'll set up my Sony camera with these settings before I leave the house. And actually, I have one of my program modes set to these settings as a default, so it's faster to return to in the field. So let's get to it. Sony bird photography camera setting number one. Shoot in raw format. Always shoot in raw format. If you have never used raw, then make a point to use it right now. Pick up your camera and set the image quality as raw or raw plus fine JPEG. Sony cameras specifically have a great dynamic range. Raw files allow you to get the most out of this in post-production. Why is this important? Out in the field, you can't always adjust to the environment you're in. The light is always changing. Clouds are rolling by, birds are flying in and out of the shade and sun. If you shoot JPEG only, you'll end up with a best guess by your camera. This is why raw files with high dynamic range are so important. They help you to recover the photo in post-production and get you back to what you saw when you were taking the picture of the bird. Raw files allow you to adjust white balance settings, pull out details and shadows or highlights of the bird in its environment. With Sony cameras, you can bring back phenomenal detail in the shadow regions in post-production. You can work on getting the perfect contrast and color in your image and so much more. So don't forget, switch to raw. Sony camera setting number two for bird photography. Use the auto white balance. Sounds like a contradiction to tip number one, but it's not. Hear me out. Even though you can set the white balance yourself in camera or correct it in RAW, when you're out in the field, you'll be looking at the photos as you shoot them, pixel peeping. As you look at the bird photo on the back of the Sony camera or in the eyepiece, you will naturally want to see how good the bird looks. Now imagine that the color of the bird is all wrong because the white balance is wrong. Your natural instinct will be to make some sort of adjustment to the camera to correct this, but you don't have to because you're shooting in RAW. This is a simple thing, but one that can easily divert your attention away from taking pictures of birds to adjusting your camera settings. The result is less time taking photos and most likely messing up your settings. So the key here is to set your white balance to auto. As the birds fly in and out of the shade or the clouds roll in and out, your camera will compensate and adjust the white balance to something that's very close to accurate. Now when you pixel peep the bird photo you just took, you won't be distracted by the color and you can now take a look at the overall composition of the photo. So use raw format, set your camera to auto white balance, and then forget about it. Sony camera setting number three. What mode should you use? This is where the fun starts. It might be easier if I begin with the Sony bird photography settings I use today and the logic behind them, and then after, share with you the camera settings I started with when I first used Sony cameras for bird photography. This evolution of how I changed my camera settings to where I am today might help explain better why I made those choices. Here are my default Sony A7R Mark IV camera settings for bird photography. Manual mode, shutter speed minimum one over 1,250, aperture wide open, usually f2.8 or f4.5 depending on the lens, ISO bracketed between 320 and 1250, 
focus mode set to autofocus. Autofocus area set to lock on autofocus expand flexible spot. That's about it. So let me break down why I start there and what usually happens in the field. I pick a shutter speed of 1 over 1250 of a second simply so I can freeze the bird even if it's sitting still on a branch. From there I'll adjust the shutter speed depending on a few factors. First, the types of birds that are around me. I'll slow down the shutter speed if the birds are more docile and crank it up if they're moving around quickly. Generally the lowest shutter speed I'll go is 1 over the length of the lens. So for a 100 to 400 millimeter lens, minimum shutter speed would be 1 over 500th of a second. A bonus tip is I use a monopod so I can push the shutter speed down as low as possible. This allows me to reduce the ISO and capture an overall better bird photo. Next, the aperture being wide open. This is a starting point and one you'll need to adjust based on the birds in your area. If you're using a long telephoto or zoom lens for a Sony camera to capture bird photos at a distance, shooting wide open is okay. The depth of field shouldn't be an issue and your bird should be completely in focus. However, if you're using a 70 to 200 millimeter to capture birds close to you, you may want to change the aperture from f2.8 to say something like 5.6 so you can capture all or most of the bird in focus. The last thing to consider for overall exposure is the ISO setting. The Sony a7R4 and some of the other Sony cameras allow you to bracket the ISO. What this means is you can set a low point and a high point for your ISO value. This is perfect for getting the correct or close to correct exposure for each photo. The camera will now adjust the ISO between your high and low value for every bird photo ensuring you have an almost perfect exposure. Now you can focus on taking bird pictures and on the most critical setting, the shutter speed. The last thing to set and pretty much forget is the focus points. The Sony cameras have a number of ways you can set the focus points. My preference is to use continuous focus mode, after all the birds are constantly moving, and set the autofocus area to lock on, autofocus, expand flexible spot. To get the most out of this focus setup, I use back button focus. This lets me lock in the focus on the bird as it moves around. Then when the bird is in a composition I like, I fire away. A side benefit to this is it reduces the overall number of wasted shots. Often I can snap three or four photos of a bird knowing most of them are going to be well composed and in focus. Well in a nutshell, that is my go-to default Sony bird photography camera settings. Again, please help me to support my channel by subscribing and hitting that notification button below so you won't miss my next video. And if you'd like to learn more about my bird photography and how I took each photo, check out my Instagram channel where I detail what camera I used, what camera lens I used, and the camera settings for each of those bird photos. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching and I hope you try out some of these Sony camera settings the next time you're out taking pictures of birds or wildlife. Remember, it's your photography. Go shoot it.